Okay, welcome back, uh, CIS 123. This is officially uh, week 13 uh, of our sessions, and we've been doing this every week since uh, early September. Uh, so what's left uh, so far is that I think that the latest uh, quiz, quiz 6, is posted. This is going to cover, uh, for the most part, inheritance uh, issues with inheritance uh, of uh, classes, in object-oriented programming languages. Uh, but besides that, uh, quiz seven is going to be our final exam and it's going to be posted in a, in a very similar manner uh, closer to the end of the semester. So we have, of course, haven't even started talking about um, on inheritance and virtual functions and all that related business to this, but we're going to start today. So, but you know, uh, I would like to post some of these quizzes uh, well in advance so that you can practice and get enough time to to prepare everything by the due date. So that's regarding the the the, the remaining work and and what's currently being posted. And although it says uh, week 11 topics in reality, this is week 13 and we're uh, going to be catching up with uh, anything uh, for week uh, 11, 12, 13, 14 within this, within this uh, uh, set of topics related to inheritance. Uh, one thing uh, that I would like to talk about today is um, a relationship a relationship uh, between uh, classes. Now, basically, we can have create we can create classes in our software, right? So usually, uh, we say class, right? We give it a, a name, and then we open the curly brace and we put some member variables over here, right? Then we can say public. Uh, public, and then we provide some constructors, then we provide some uh, member functions that do something useful. Basically, uh, over here, constructors, constructors, uh, operations, right? And then eventually we're going to close the brace, and if it's a C++, then you also have to use the semicolon at the end for, to, to keep the syntax right. Uh, but in reality, uh, all it does is creates a blueprint for an object that we can create, and usually we can diagram these classes as boxes, right? So before we even uh, create uh, any uh, instances of class uh, which has this specific name, right, we can basically draw a diagram of it, right? So we can say name. Uh, right here and specify data and operations in a box. So usually when you have a non-trivial uh, system designed to do uh, based on object-oriented uh, principles, uh, it's helpful to do some diagramming and uh, planning uh, beforehand. So today I would like to share with you a few of these uh, uh, um, uh, diagramming ideas that do exist and I'm just like Try to get rid of all of this and start from scratch. Uh, consider that I have a class named House, right? House. Uh, and another uh, class that's named Room, okay? So because if I want to work with houses with rooms, I can put together these classes. So Room is pretty simple class, uh, which may have like, an, like a variable named Area right area of the room and it could be some kind of like a double uh, double uh, type of variable right and uh, it could could have a constructor uh, constructor a room that basically takes area as a parameter and I can also have uh, a, a, a function that says get uh, get area or compute area something like that which doesn't take any parameters and basically uh, is a very simple uh, type of method or function that returns the, uh, the value of this area. Of course, anytime I draw a box like this, which officially in UML, Unified Modeling Language, would be called a class uh, diagram, 
okay? So it has those three sections, basically the name of the class, the set of variables, and then uh, the set of operations, including constructors, okay? Likewise, I can have a house, which obviously, you know, will be another class, which somehow may be associated with a room, okay? So basically, I can have right here, what I could do within this house, I can say that there is a pointer to a room, okay? A room pointer, uh, um, PR, pointer to room, something like that. So I can create a variable here which is a pointer to room. So we have a situation like this, we would call it an association relationship between classes. B basically we can say that house knows about the room because it has a pointer to it. Let me quickly demonstrate this same idea in uh, uh, in a small, like, throwaway project. All right, so I will go create new project uh, very quickly. Uh, new project. I will use Visual Studio, but later I, I actually plan to use code blocks for our demonstration. Empty project, my projects. This is uh, week uh, 12, uh, week 13, I apologize, right? And this is uh, um, class... Uh, relationship that we're trying to demonstrate today. So uh, the, the name, uh, actually this I can use as a name of my project. Uh, and just go ahead and create this empty project. Okay. So all this demonstration should be able to fit into a single file. So I'll just go view solution explorer that's the structure of my project. It's it's empty. So I'm going to add the new uh, new file very quickly. I'm going to name it main CPB and place it under source to keep it organized. Okay, so we have this file, right? So the usual include uh, perhaps IO stream, so we can have some basic communication going. include the standard libraries, the C standard library facilities, int main, the standard stuff like this, and we have to be able to pause it so that the window doesn't disappear quickly. Okay, so that looks uh, pretty pretty str uh, uh, straightforward. So here's uh, class uh, house, right? So as we said, class house has a pointer to a room. It doesn't have a room, it just has a pointer to a room, and we said PR would be the name of that thing, okay? And we need to initialize it. So for this, we can say public uh, label and we can say constructor for house uh, will be taking a room pointer a room pointer like this and in this quick demonstration I will be writing my code Java style basically in line I'm not going to create a separate header file I'm just going to be creating this in line so if I have this constructor for my house uh, and it requires a pointer to a room, it means that uh, before I can create a house, I need to provide basically a, 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 an address of an existing room before I can construct the house. Okay, I will use initializer list and say PR initialized with PR, right? So it's basically this PR right here. Uh, this is my uh, data member, which is pointer to a room, and this PR is basically the parameter. So essentially this parameter is assigned to PR, and the house is created with uh, whatever is passed to this uh, constructor. And the body of the constructor is empty, right? Even though we use initializer list in C++, we still need to provide 
implementation for constructor, which is absolutely as trivial as it can be. It does nothing and has not, no executable code. Pretty much all my constructor for the house does is just executes this initializer. Of course, you can see that I'm trying to use a room, right? But that I never told my compiler what that room is. So perhaps for me, it's, it makes sense to say class room. Uh, and uh, we said that uh, since uh, uh, we would like to make it look a little bit more like reasonable type of classes, we can say double, uh, double area. This is a variable that simply stores a value for area. And likewise, public constructor for a room object will most likely will require a double uh, area. Uh, realistically, it would probably also take a, a type of room, like string, which would explain what that is, uh, like a bedroom or, or, or family room or something like that. But I'll keep it very simple. And likewise, I'll initialize this area, uh, use uh, my initializer list. So obviously, when you say area over here, uh, after the column, you're referring to this area that is stored with the room class. And initialize it with the area that was passed to this constructor. And it's absolutely trivial, just does this initialization. And the rest of constructor does absolutely nothing. So we just provide ways to uh, populate objects with some meaningful values right as we create them. And like I said, most likely I would like to add something like double uh, get area, right? Double get area. And uh, that function, again, I will write it in line like this. Uh, absolutely trivial return area, right? So this is a typical getter uh, function uh, which returns a double, uh, basically returns a value that this object already has, right? So in order to be able to create the room, I need to be able to provide the initial value. So let me give it a try, uh, a try in main. Oh, by the way, over here, I forgot to add, add the semicolon. And then, of course, I, you know, my habit is to uh, uh, annotate the tails of uh, my classes. So I can basically make it a little bit more readable uh, when when I work with these classes, or so I can see where the beginning and the ending of it is, right? And over here I can say uh, room and create a room named RM with an area I don't know 100 square feet, whatever, right? Just really something uh, to to be able to use, um, and then create a house. And of course, if I want to create a house, uh, this little house with uh, just one room, um, I need to be able to provide the address of the object, which is the room object. So room I have already, right? So this is the room object, and I need to pass the address of it so that this pointer right here will be initialized with pointer to a room. Now, this whole thing now makes sense, and I can possibly uh, save everything and then go build uh, this project and uh, even run it. It doesn't, it doesn't interact with the user, but just to be sure that everything is more or less OK, is that when I run it, it says press any key to continue, which is, which is at least it doesn't crash. So that, that's good news. Everything seems to be in place. Let me just make my usual adjustments to our colors and everything else. OK. So program uh, does create uh, instances of a uh, room and then the house. I call them RM and house. And uh, both have constructors like this and like this. And they require some parameters. So I just had hard-coded 100 square feet, whatever the un units of measurement uh, um, are. And then I provided the an another constructor with an address of that object so that everything got initialized. 